Welcome to another part of Ars Electronica Home Delivery, a journey through the universe. Um, my name is Birgit Hartinger and I already did quite a few parts uh, and this part has already been shown in German but not in English. It's a special home delivery today because we also have visitors in here. They just did a guided tour. Um, but for the home delivery part, the, the first part of the deep space, uh, Uniview will only be presented in two, 2D, not in 3D. Afterwards, when we are done, our visitors will get glasses and then they will fly through the universe in 3D. But if you w we would have uh, uh, 3D, then all the lines would be double. If you look at the Earth in the background now, you see that there are two Earths. Um, and what I'm going to do now, this is uh, the, the, the Android phone which would I'm um, operating this program and uh, here, for example, I can choose st uh, stereo off. That's at the very bottom. And then I can try to switch that on. I'm also showing you this because, as you notice, it does not always work at the first go. And this... And after, and in this program, in this special home delivery, I'll turn on off lo a lot of things. And me and techn technology is often not very compatible, so I might be struggling a tiny little bit. Just give me a few seconds, then it, then it will work. So, okay, uh, we already started uh, this program. And I'm asking uh, our one of the technicians, could you give me a laser pointer, please? Okay, so uh, if when I move the, uh, my finger over the, the screen, I can turn the Earth around and I can zoom out and zoom in. Right now, well, today's program is mostly about uh, galaxies. So what we are seeing here is the Milky Way and if you ever saw that, then you'll recognize it immediately. This is the so-called pipe nebula. It looks like a boomerang. This is a dark cloud. And right behind this is the center of our Milky Way, which is around 26,000 light years away. So the light from there takes 20, a little more than 26,000 years to reach us. Uh, we'll see the center later on, but now I'm sh trying to find another galaxy. Edwin Hubble, after whom the Hubble telescope was named, was looking at nebula, and in two th 1924 he uh, found a variable star in the Andromeda galaxy, which I'm trying to find now. Um, and uh, with this variable star, he could determine uh, that Andromeda is not in... Okay, now I'm going to help myself, because what I can do in this program is also to turn the constellations on. And if I do that, then I might, it might be easier to find Andromeda. And here we have this effect. It didn't work at the first go, but at the second try. So, okay, so here, ah, we are at a completely, but that, that's cool. Uh, what we see here, this uh, constellation is, is called Cepheus. And this is the star Delta Cephi. This is a variable star, means uh, that it's periodically uh, lighter and darker. This has to do with the uh, fusion of elements taking place in the center of the star. Whenever um, it, um, yeah, it's, it's running out of hydrogen, and if it starts fusing uh, beryllium uh, instead of, of helium out of four hydrogens, that's uh, uh, the, the, the light 
which is emitted is absolutely uh, defined. But as soon as it, it starts burning beryllium, then the star expands again, so the temperature and the pressure is going down, which means there is not enough temperature and pressure to, to uh, keep on burning uh, hydrogen or helium to beryllium. And so uh, it, this process stops, the star then gravity takes over, and, and the star is, is yeah, getting smaller again, the temperature and the pressure is rising, and the whole process starts from, from this is called a standard candle, and uh, you know exactly when it starts burning again, uh, how much light is emitted, and uh, if you know how bright the star is, you also can measure the distance. So this is Cepheus, and now we are... Oh. Here, this is Andromeda. It's only a, a nebula, and they the thought, uh, yeah, it was just a, a class of uh, cl uh, cloud of gas or something. Uh, and then Hubble did, uh, discovered that this is not uh, a nebula, but a different galaxy. And we are now flying with multiple speed of light and are looking at our home galaxy from the outside. And here we go. This is a fake image. Did, did you see uh, that the, the Andromeda stayed at its place? And if you don't believe me that it is Andromeda, I can also uh, turn uh, the, the labels on. And then you can see that you, there will be M31. M31 is Andromeda. This is M33, uh, the tri Triangulum Nebula, and other galaxy. And now we zoom in our mil Milky Way a little bit more. This is a spiral galaxy, but it's a fake image. Nothing left our galaxy and sent uh, pictures back. This distance is um, around 100,000 light years. And in the center of our galaxy is a supermassive black hole. Now you might be thinking, okay, she tells me a supermassive black hole, and all I see is bright light. This is the gas surrounding the center of our galaxy. And uh, you can also see where we are positioned. That this is where the sun is, and as I mentioned before, 20 uh, uh, between 26 and 27,000 light years is the distance to the supermassive black hole. And if you think, oh, dangerous, we might be sucked into that, no. Uh, this um, black hole is absolutely necessary because if that would not keep the whole galaxy together, then the stars would be flying everywhere. Uh, so this is absolutely essential. But it's not enough gravity to keep the stars on their way, which means there is uh, also something which we did not discover till now called dark matter. And the whole universe, if you uh, checked at all the energy and mass which we found till, far, till now, only 5% is visible. All the galaxies you see later on is only 5% of the universe. 25% are dark matter, which has a gravitational effect on all the galaxies and all the matter, but it does not interact with electromagnetic forces, so you, we can see it. And then we know the universe is expanding, and they call that dark energy. And whenever a physicist calls something dark, you could also say, don't know, no idea. We, we just, uh, we can watch the galaxies flying away. They are all redshifted, but we don't know uh, what they are. 
Uh, what I can also show now in this program, the sun is moving around the center of the galaxy and I can now show the sun's orbit in the, the galaxy. You see, that's not always exactly the same. It varies a little bit and it takes the sun 250 million years to do one full orbit. And uh, the sun does not always move uh, in the same speed. Whenever it goes through one of the spiral arms, it slows down because of the gravity of all the other stars. And if you come into an area where there are very little stars, it speeds up. And not all stars move the same. I can show you two other orbits. This is the orbit of the Barnard star. Barnard, uh, in, in German, Pfeil, uh, Stern. I don't know if the English translation is Arrow star. Could be Donner. Uh, is one of the fastest moving objects in the night sky. And another, uh, the second fastest mo moving star is one called Captain. Uh, captain star. They are moved. Uh, that they are named after the, the discoverers who found out that they are moving. And you see that they have rather odd orbits. And then uh, I can also turn on of uh, an, an, an orbit of one star. All it says in on the screen is PM. PM normally st stands for proper motion but I don't know the name of the star. And you can also see not all move in the plane of the galaxy. Some move completely in di different things. Um, we now see in the background to uh, SMC, LMC, this is the uh, small and the large Mag Magellanic cloud. And this, for example, is a galaxy called Sculptor. Sculptor is a, a constellation in the southern hemisphere. And it's very interesting because Sculptor, they, they already discovered an exoplanet um, multiple the size of Jupiter in this galaxy. And now we are flying farther out. So. Uh, what will happen now, I'll, I'll enlarge the galaxies, means it will be very bright, don't be shocked. Um, so now all the images of the galaxies are in the right position, but they are not uh, in the right size. And it's so bright because Andromeda overlaps our Milky Way. By the way, Andromeda is on a collision course with the Milky Way, and in like uh, three... 3.5 billion years they will collide. At the moment Andromeda is at the distance of 2.5 million light years. And every dot you see now is a galaxy. And the red dots on the side are so-called uh, quasars, uh, quasi-stellar objects. They look like stars, but they are, uh, they are, they are galaxies probably in the early stage of development. And if you see the so-called sand clock shape now, here the Milky Way blocks our sight and it was not added. And there are more galaxies on the left side as on the right side. That is, when this program Univerview was done, the Sloan survey had been taken place on the northern hemisphere, but not in the southern hemisphere. It was not completed then. Uh, it is completed in the meanwhile, and they found just as many galaxies as, uh, yeah, and, uh, uh, yeah, outside the northern hemisphere. And the very last things I'm going to show you, and then I'm going to end the uh, home delivery, is so the so-called uh, baby picture of the universe, the microwave background radiation. And the 
first 379 um, years after the Big Bang, uh, the universe uh, was a plasma and light could not escape. And then it, uh, it, it reached the temperature where atoms could be formed. And this is exactly what this shows. When you turn on your TV and you don't have a program, then you see this kind of a snowstorm. Part of the snowstorm on your TV screen is the, uh, the, the echo of the Big Bang. And with those images uh, recently done uh, by a new uh, probe called Planck, uh, it shows temperature differences, where it's red, it's a little hotter, um, but around 2.5, uh, 2.4 Kelvin, so very, very cold. Uh, but in the, um, um, there's a temperature difference of uh, some hundreds of a degree, uh, and where there was, uh, it was a little warmer, galaxies developed, and where it was a little colder, not much developed. So this is the proof that our uh, uh, universe was created in the Big Bang and it was created 13 point, um, almost 8 um, billion years ago. So and with this I'm ending the home delivery part. Uh, thank you for your attention on the, on the TV screens or on YouTube. I'm just announcing that there will be another journey through the universe in English next Thursday at 1 o'clock and there we will deal with the terrestrial planets which means we won't really fly out into the universe, we'll stay in the solar system. Thank you and please visit us again.